All right, next up, Python on hardware. Um, it's mostly... Pico, 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 it's, Pico, 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 Pico. It's, it's mostly people <laughs> getting Picos and saying, I want to do projects on it and with it. What and kind then of projects? Putting Circuit, Circuit Python, Python on it. Projects. Yeah, so um, that's kind of why we made Circuit Python. Like, what's cool is you have all these choices you can write and see. You can do MicroPython, you can do Circuit Python. Um, but when folks want to do projects, um, one of the things, because we have a lot of guides and code and tutorials, mm -hmm. is they're using Circuit Python. Uh, so right. a few things that we covered. Um, there was um, good I've had a lot of podcasts. And yeah, stuff. The, yeah, everyone's doing the, the, the podcast tours. Um, there was discussion with the designers of the RP twenty forty chip designer folks um, over at the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So you can um, learn the history about it. Look at their desktops. Listen. Look at their desktops on their desktops. Yeah. So uh, I think it's Liam Fraser and a few others. And you can check that on the Raspberry Pi blog. Um, they also talk about yeah, like how they went through this ARM process to get the the core of the chip and then add peripherals because they wanted to do the PIO stuff and like how do you merge that with the ARM Cortex yeah. core? So people were like, why didn't they go with Risk Five? I don't know. Watch this video. Yeah, I think a lot of the hot take tweets that people they should maybe just. Read some of these interviews or the videos. Yeah, or, or watch them. Yeah, yeah, because lots I, of good details. I think a lot of it is answered in these places. Like, oh, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Yeah, um, I see that happen a lot in electronics, where someone spends a huge amount of time on something. There's obviously design decisions, and they spend a lot of time on the documentation, say why they did something. But then nobody reads it. And then no one <laughs> reads it, and then people get discouraged, and they don't want to do hardware or software anymore. So um, this is pretty rare. You don't get to like see and hear interviews. This is quite rare. With, Look, I, I don't with know other if, chip people who've worked on chips. Here's the deal: there are people at you know Microchip, Atmel, Nordic, you know ST that design the chip. I have no idea who they are. I will never talk to them. Like, yeah. they're they're hidden, right? And and good for them. They should hide because uh, like why answer people's questions if you don't have to? So I'm I'm really impressed. Most with... Most don't because they don't they don't want to deal with it. No, why deal with it? That's why it's so great yeah. that the Raspberry Pi folks, like, they all came out and they're like, here's what I worked on and talking about the process. Yeah. And, you know, it's actually kind of funny. They're, like, a little decompressing. They're, like, kind of doing therapy because it's been, like, a four-year-long project. Um, but now we – and, we, you know, at the end, there's just, like, this chip, and it's, like, really small. But it took four years. Yeah. So, um, anyways, I think it's also going to change the way microcontroller makers have to compete because you yeah. can't just – you can't just hide behind a crummy data sheet and like endless, um, like weird app notes. App notes or like, <laughs> you know, there's there, well, there's a story behind a lot of these things. Yeah. And I think um, this changes. I like the openness. Yeah. Um, Amp Hour also has a podcast um, they could check out. Uh, the January 2021 uh, Melbourne MicroPython Meetup happened. So we usually post this up in our newsletter. Uh, Damien talks about the MicroPython port for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Yes. Um, we mentioned the uh, Adafruit AR overlay. This is really handy. Um, we're seeing kids, like a lot of kids have iPads. Uh, a lot of kids iPhones. have iPhones. Yeah, you have, you have to have a modern iPhone. And they're to able, use an AR kit. Yeah, and they have a Pico. So they're able to look at all the, the pins and more. Um, every Friday, Scott has a deep dive. You can check out that one. Uh, the latest was the RP2040 audio and the DMA debugging. And then around the web, um, we've been collecting up um, all the examples we've seen of yeah, Circuit Python and Pico and Game Duino Dazzler. And Pico. Yeah. Uh, and then this is that Tim on project with the LED beauty lamp, so it's a NeoPixel inside. Yeah. Um, this is a different. This is a not Pico project. Like one way through. Uh, this is fun. Actually, people like this. this. Is a soil moisture indicator using off-the-shelf electronics, and it's cool because it's like, you know, existing code just worked. Uh, people got Circuit Python working with the display on on the. Uh, 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 Pimeroni Explorer. Yep. Uh, there's an NES emulator if you want to play with that. Uh, folks are doing HID and LEDs and, and NeoPixels. All stuff that we have working really well in CircuitPython. So cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's what we've been Another Python keeping news. track of. Um, the other thing I thought that was neat, uh, someone collected all the bitmap fonts you have, like, games um, and stuff. from Demoware. And then yeah. there's, there's a couple more examples where you can just like type into... A form and then all the fonts come in. I think that'll be neat for like really small devices. Well, the project that we just did, Carter did for the CO2 um, display that we showed off last week, he didn't use a font because he had to have like the, the pixels look a certain way. So he actually made a sprite map font. Yeah. Um, so this would be the same technique, it would work really great. 
All right, we're up to 297 libraries. We'll be up to 300 pretty soon. Ooh. That's kind of exciting. And then, as usual, we have some of the upcoming events and more. Um, Open Hardware Summit is Lots in virtual, virtual mode. Virtual, virtual. Um, GeoPython, PyCon US, and more. You can check all this out on Adafruit Daily. I think it's the biggest Python on hardware newsletter um, out there. And uh, in case you're wondering, Python on hardware already happened. It's now getting distributed because okay. no, it is like this is something that we thought was going to happen yeah. a few years ago, and um, the fact that there's going to be millions of microcontrollers, specifically like if you add up the the, yeah. uh, the Pico, the RP twenty forty, and all the all the ones, and something, yeah, and then you add like the Nordic, and then you add the um, ESP thirty two S two, yeah, and then you add the um, Atmel microchip ones. I mean, we have, what, like 200, 250 boards? Yeah, I mean, so like, if you go to circuitpython.org, you can see yeah. the boards. Um, but it happened fast, or it happened incredibly slow, depending on if you're working on it. Like, if we've yeah. done something, it's like, bye, this has been working on it for years. But as far as um, what we've seen, and this is kind of neat from the newsletter, is new chip comes out, new board comes out, Pico, and then right away there's examples that you can literally cut and paste, um, CircuitPython being one of the examples of... Of yeah. The ease of doing this. And then I saw the things that people ask, what IDE? You don't need an IDE. You don't. When, when you use CircuitPython, for example, you don't need an IDE. You can use a text editor. You can use any IDE you want, but you're not tied into an, ED, an IDE. And I think that's one of the things that I've been seeing in some of these interviews with folks. They're, they're, they really like the idea of a REPL, that they can do real-time stuff. Yeah. And they also really like not having to compile and then upload to a board. Like that. I, I keep saying, it's amazing that MicroPython was a first-class development environment for this chip. Never happened before. This is the first chip where Python hardware is is the first-class language of, of, of use. It's not like the quote-unquote toy, fun, like, ooh, weird hack. It's like, yeah. no, nope, this is official. This is how they expect people to program this chip. Yeah. Very cool. So I think, you know, January was kind of a big month for a lot of this stuff. Like, that's... That's when I think the, the, the next chapter really started. Like we yeah. were like whatever like the makers, hackers are doing like on the weekends, eventually it becomes mainstream and mainstream in this case is the Pi Foundation did a chip and shipping on the chip is Python. Yeah. So anyways, good stuff. And that is the Python hardware news for the week. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Blinka.